Jose Amaya Gardado and his family left El Salvador for the United States to flee the violence there. However, they entered a nightmare when they got to Florida. Jose was brutally attacked regularly, tormented, and killed with a machete. And that's not the end of it. Unimaginable is what the four teenagers did next to his lifeless body. Jose Amaya Gardado was born in 1998 to parents Lucia and Santos Amaya. For the biggest part of their lives, Jose and his parents and his five siblings lived in El Salvador, a tiny country in Central America. El Salvador has truly gorgeous scenery, lively towns full of color and amazing cuisine. The country also has a dark side, its infamous narcotic gangs and the bloody wars that ensue between them. Unfortunately, the constant fighting and high criminality rate affected El Salvador's residents on a daily basis. Later, her father decided to move to U.S. Florida to get away from the violence that surrounded them back at El Salvador. The sad things that happened next was something no one expected. To help him achieve his goals, his father, Santos, enrolled him in the Homestead Job Corps Center, a free vocational training program for at-risk youth run by the U.S. Department of Labor. At the center, Jose would learn various skills, including mechanical and office administration, which would prepare him for his future career. However, things took a turn for the worse when Jose was targeted by a group of notorious bullies who were part of the same labor center that Jose went to. They harassed him for months and stole his money. Santos Amaya, Amaya Gardado's father, claimed that his son started attending school months before he passed away. Amaya's son, the youngest of six children, expressed interest in studying to become a mechanic. Still, the family was unaware that the school accepted students with criminal backgrounds. One afternoon in June 2015, Jose left to get some snacks, but never returned. His family reported him missing, but the police were uncooperative, citing that he had to be missing for 72 hours before they could start investigating. Jose's family took matters into their own hands and searched for him themselves. Two days later, they discovered Jose's decomposed body, which had been brutally hacked with a machete and burned. The police finally began to investigate, and within a day they had one of the suspects, Kahim Arbello, in custody. He said that his son shared a residence with Arbello, identified in the police report as the main assailant. The cause of death has not been given by the police. According to Jose Amaya Gardado's parents, he was a quiet youngster who mostly stayed to himself and never troubled people. According to the parents, the younger, bespectacled child was being bullied by the suspects, who also thought they had been stealing money from him. In Spanish, Santos Amaya remarked of the school, when you go there, they only show you the good. They don't display the undesirable. The Labor Department did not immediately respond to a phone message left late on Friday. The department's main concern was security. After the initial attack, Jose Amaya Gardado was reportedly told to lie in the tiny grave. Still, he made one final attempt to fend off the attackers. At that point, according to the authorities, Arbello repeatedly beat Amaya Gardado with a machete until his face collapsed. According to the allegation, the suspects then shoved Amaya Gardado into the grave and buried him. After the murder, Strickland and Arbello lingered to engage in sexual activity. According to officials, the suspects cleared the area, torched the victim's possessions and clothing, and disposed of the firearm. It was impossible to get in touch with the suspects' families. To bring a case against the Homestead Center Job Corps, Jose's family really engaged a lawyer. One of their significant errors was not being open to admitting students with criminal records. Before enrolling today, first-year students should be aware of this. For the murder of Jose, only Kahim Arbello is on trial for the death sentence. It was revealed that Desiree did accept a plea agreement in September 2022. In an orange jumpsuit with her right hand raised, Desiree Strickland admitted to conspiring to kill. Desiree was given a 15-year sentence, but because the seven years she has already served will be added to that, she could be released as soon as 2030. That's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this one. Thanks for watching.